Répondez, s'il vous plaît. Grace, peace, and mercy from God the Father, His Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Pray with me, please. Father, you have gathered your children here today to worship you, to honor you, to receive words of encouragement, words of love. Lord, speak to us today. We come in Jesus' name. Amen. Didn't know you. Didn't know you. Didn't you? Didn't know I could speak French, did you? You're right. I can't. <laughs> so the postal service person delivers a brightly covered envelope, and you look at it with questions. Who is this from? There's no return address here. So. You go ahead and you open the envelope, and lo and behold, it's an invitation to a huge party. This is the social event of the year, and you got an invitation. Are you kidding me? On the bottom line of the invitation are the letters RSVP. And now some doubts might just start to creep in. Am I really supposed to be part of this event? How did my name get on this guest list? And if I go, will I even know anyone else at this party? But this offer really is too good to pass up. So you respond, okay, I'll go. The day comes and you think you are dressed to impress. You're feeling pretty darn important. You are one of the chosen. As soon as you walk into the banquet room, you really feel like you're out of place. The room is filled with the richest, most powerful people you've ever seen. Your reaction may be, I guess I'll grab a seat here at the table in the corner. And as you make your way to the obscure corner of the room, the host of the event, who just happens to be the most famous person you've ever heard of, waves at you to come to the front. Best ignore him. He's probably not even waving at me. Then you hear your name called by the host. He starts walking towards you. Well, I guess this was too good to be true. He's going to kick me out. I knew I didn't deserve to be here anyway. But with a firm handshake, he greets you by name and tells you he is overjoyed that you're here. This can't be true. This can't really be happening. Well, now the room is almost full. And the host says, come with me to the head table. I have a place just for you. But before we take our place at that table, in our Old Testament reading, we are reminded that we need to be purified, to have evil removed, the dross, as it is called, so that we can be molded into a fine vessel of silver. It also says, do not put yourself forward in the king's presence. It is better to be told, come up here. Now, as we go through this process, Jesus teaches us to continue to be humble just as he was. In John chapter 13, Jesus washes his disciples' feet and says, If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should also do just as I have done to you. 
our journey, as we saw this morning, begins with being washed in the waters of baptism. We begin to grow in faith and work on living our lives as people of God. In our Hebrews reading, which we're going to hear now and which we will say again, do not neglect to do good and share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. We let God mold us into that fine piece of silver, even though we don't always know what his plan is for us. It is the glory of God to conceal things. But in 1 Peter chapter 1, we're invited to that heavenly banquet and we're given the reason why. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. According to his great mercy, he has caused us. It's not what we've done or what we do, it's who he is. And we're warned to keep ourselves humble not to let our human self-worth rule us. Yeah, we're chosen through the blood of Jesus. But we're not to march up to the head of the table figuring we deserve it. We're the ones who are dirty, rotten, broken sinners. We don't deserve anything except eternal punishment and certainly, certainly, not a place at that head table. You know, Jesus gives out a lot of invitations. And we ask, how are you going to respond? Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Come to me, all who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. The host of the biggest and everlasting banquet is asking you to join him at the table. He's not coming to kick you out or to humiliate you, but to give you an honored place with him. How are you responding to his RSVP? With humble service, a pure heart, and childlike faith. It's all he asks of us. In Micah 6.8, it tells us, He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. And when it's all said and done, we hear his voice welcoming us to that banquet with the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Repondez, s'il vous plaît. Yes, Lord, I humbly accept your invitation. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with you all. Amen.